Good Sunday morning. It's good to be here with all of you this morning. We're not in church this morning. We have some sickness in the church, so we did, I decided uh, you can blame it on me if you want to point a finger at anybody, point, point right here. It was me that made the decision that uh, we shouldn't meet together today. Uh, we've got a little bit of sickness going around that we don't want it to spread. We've got too many elderly in our church that are already sick, and we didn't want to affect them any. Uh, we're going to try to be back in service uh, Wednesday night, if at all possible, and I don't see any reason why we can't. So uh, just be praying for that, and that's what we should do is be praying for everything. So we're going to have our service this morning right here online. Uh, we're going to have the same message we would have if we were uh, in the church building and if we were all together in that building. But uh, praise the Lord, we're all together here this morning, loving one another like we always do, and spreading God's word. That's the most important thing is how we can spread God's word. Uh, I'm not going to sing to you this morning, but I had a song picked out that goes right along with the message this morning. It's talking about how great God is. And the title of our sermon this morning is, But God, But God, if it weren't for God, where would you be this morning? The song I picked out was, How Great Thou Art. And just listen to the words. We don't even have to sing the songs if we just read the words. And, and so uh, you might want to just sit back and let your mind think about these words here oh lord my god when i an awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made i see the stars i hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe displayed and then the chorus says then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And truly today we do serve a great God, uh, one that we can't even explain, one that uh, lives in our hearts and, and helps us and guides us through each day. And then he goes on to say, when through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. I love birds. I hope all of y'all are got some uh, cardinals around here that I sit and whistle to and they whistle back at me and we have a good time in the mornings but just singing those birds singing in the morning and when I look down from lofty mountain yonder uh, grander and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze but the last verse of this song listen very carefully when Christ shall come and believe me today Christ is coming back again whether you want to accept that or not accept it, uh, it's not a, a matter of whether you do or whether you don't. He's coming back anyway. It's imminent. When Christ shall come and shout with acclamation and take me home. That's why he's coming back. He's coming back to take us home. What a joy shall fill my heart. And we should have that joy in our heart every day looking forward to that day that God is going to send his son Jesus to rapture us out and take us to heaven, that where he is there we, we will be also. Then I shall bow in humble adoration, bow down before Jesus. And I tell you this morning, whether you believe it or not, and, and I'm going to say that several times this morning, whether you believe it or not, it's going to happen. You're going to bow down. You're going to bow down before God one day. We're going to bow down uh, right before Jesus after the rapture. We're going to bow down and worship him. Then I shall bow in humble adoration, and there proclaim, My God, how great thou art. And thank God for sending his son, Jesus Christ, to us, for us to be able to, to live today, to do the things that he would have us to do. If you have your Bibles this morning, that shouldn't be a question. If you have, I should say, take your Bibles this morning and turn to second chapter of Ephesians, the second chapter of Ephesians. And I want to read you what Paul was telling these Ephesians, how they were saved by grace through their faith in Jesus Christ. And then you see later on that Paul prayed for that church, and that's what we, we need to do today. But just listen to these words. 
and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh fulfilling desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath just as the others but god remember those words this morning but god but god who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses made us alive together with christ and by grace you have been saved and raised up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Listen, listen. But God, it's not in there, it's not in the eighth verse, but I'm saying it, but God, for by grace you have been saved through faith and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Verses 1 through 10. And I also kind of want to add verses 11 and 12 and put them together and listen to them as Paul speaks. Therefore, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who were called uncircumcision, by which is called the circumcision, made the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of the promise. Listen, having no hope, having no hope, and without God in the world. Verse 13, we'll throw it in, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, Paul was telling these Ephesians all about Jesus. He was telling them what they were like before they were saved, before Christ come into their life. And There were times in our lives, too, when we were lost, when we were lost and dead in our sins, and we had to accept Christ and let him come into our heart this morning. Uh, But Paul puts us between the despair and hope and life and death. And Paul uses this text to show these Ephesians and to show us today. I want you to remember that what Paul was saying to the Ephesians then is also what Paul is saying to us today. So we need to open up our ears and listen to what Paul has to say. Paul used this text to show us what we were before we accepted Christ. And then he was showing us what we became after we received Christ Christ through the grace of God. And Paul uses three verses, three verses to tell this Ephesian church that what they were before Jesus came in and what they were before when they were converted. Uh, Verse 4 was very important. He tells them what God has done in their lives because they accepted him as Jesus, their Savior. So let's examine a little bit what Paul was telling these Ephesians. First of all, I believe this morning that Paul's trying to tell us what our condition is without God, just as he was telling the Ephesians what their condition was without God. Ours is the same way today. He tells us, And if you don't know Christ, it's kind of a a bleak thing to listen to Paul talk. Paul is very serious. He's very concerned. We should get very serious. We should get very concerned about the ones that are lost, the ones that don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And we should be telling them why Jesus died and what he did for them. Uh, He reminds us of our past conditions, the way we were before we were saved. So look at how the verse begins. He says that um, because he was speaking to the Gentile church at this time, and today he's speaking to you 
no matter what your religion is. He's speaking to this church today. He's speaking to the people uh, who were not Jews back then and was brought up according to Jewish uh, customs, but these people didn't grow up that way. They didn't have to repeat the Jewish Torah. They didn't have to repeat all the things and the rituals that the Jewish people did. He was speaking to those who were outside of the Jewish family. This morning, he's speaking to those who are outside of Christ, who don't have Christ or not in a family of Christ. And those that have not accepted Jesus as their personal Savior. So listen to what he says. They were dead in their trespasses and sin. And he says their condition of the humankind at that time without Christ would be just as they were dead already. And this morning, I want to tell you, listen, if you don't know Christ, you are dead. You are dead uh, without you don't have life. You, you, you think you've got life. I mean, you're living it up. You're doing everything you want to do. You're having a good time. Uh, but where's your hope? Do you have a hope? Do you have peace? Because without life, without hope, and without peace, we are dead. We are enemies of God, shut out from a relationship with God, and we are strangers to God's covenant and to his promises. All that without God through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said several, or God said several times in the Bible, this is my son and who I'm, I am well pleased. He's the one that sent Jesus here. He's the one that sent our Redeemer. And we have to thank God, but we also have to thank Jesus Christ for what he did. Listen, without Jesus Christ in your life, you are spiritually dead. I don't care what kind of car you drive. I don't care if you've got the finest car on the universe. I don't care how much gold and silver and rings and things you've got. It can be four carats, but you're still dead if you don't have Jesus Christ. I don't care what kind of clothes you wear. I don't care if they're the nicest clothes that's ever been made, but you're simply dressed up as a dead person if you don't know Jesus Christ. Because if you don't know Christ in your life, the text says, Paul told them they were dead. Without Jesus Christ, you're dead. You can be in the best physical shape in the world that you've ever been in, and you're still spiritually dead. So you can have everything going for you. You can have things going in the right direction. You can think that everything is perfect, but without Christ, God tells us that we are dead. The word trespass means uh, to cross the line, to, to go in some territory where you're not allowed to go. And it means to wander from its path. And Paul says here that we are dead in our trespasses. Paul's saying that there was a time in all our lives where in the trespasses, that's where we were. We were in a dead world. We had a dead heart. And we crossed that line. We all wandered across the path. We went into the trespasses. You know, we, we pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Forgive us for our trespasses, for we forgive those who trespass against us. We've all crossed that line. We missed the mark, didn't we? We missed the mark. You know, uh, a lot of you love football. It's just like a quarterback who throws to his receiver, but he throws too wide or too long, and he misses his mark. And Paul's telling all of us that there's been times when we missed our mark, when we wandered off that path, and when our lives went astray and gone places we shouldn't gone, done things that we shouldn't do. Now we missed the mark. We missed the mark of God's standard for our lives. You know, sometimes we're not honest with our own self. We make excuses for why we've done things. But let me tell you, we missed the mark. We're dead in our trespasses until we give our life to Jesus Christ. He says in his own book, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are all dead in trespasses and sin. What kind of sins 
am I talking about this morning? Lying, gossiping, covetous, lust, adultery, stealing, jealousy, disobedience, and I could go on and on and on. Whatever it is, we've all been guilty of our trespasses and our sins, and we are all dead. And that's why David says, In sin did my mother conceive me. I was born in sin and shaping into iniquity. He says, We were dead. Listen, emphasis on the word were, I hope. Look at verse 2. He said there was a time when we walked according to the course of the world, when we followed what the world was doing. We've got so many people today following that course of the world, going places, doing things, being thinking they're being happy. But they're dead. They're dead. They're walking dead. Uh, there's a movie that comes on TV now called The Walking Dead, and that's exactly what a lot of people are. Because without Christ Jesus within your heart, you are the walking dead. You know, the prince of air, which is the devil, and these demonic forces that we talked about when we were talking about heaven lay Sunday are real. Some people don't think they're real, but they're real. Sin has got a strong hold on this earth today. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be right before Jesus comes back. And we are there today, let me tell you. Ephesians 2, 3, And among whom we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and, and the mind, and we were by nature, by nature, children of wrath, even as others. Look what Paul did in verse 1. He was talking to them saying, we now, he says, not just you, but he says that there was a time that the devil had all of us. You know, sometimes people's quick to point the finger and forget their own sin, and that's what Paul was trying to tell these Ephesians here. But he's telling them to get away from that flesh, to get away from that fleshly thing. But there has been someone that has come to save them and to make them alive. We were dead at one time, but we can be alive today. I'm so glad that Paul didn't stop with verse 3 when he said we were all dead. But he went into verse 4, and it can change a lot of people's lives because verse 4 says, but God. But God, can anybody say but God? But God. This is what gives me hope for tomorrow. Even though I didn't have a whole lot working for me before, I had a lot working against me. And today, if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal name, you can have even more against you. But when you look at those two words that says, but God. Even though I was on my way into a burning hell, but God didn't think you would ever make it but God when I looked like the devil when it looked like the devil had you uh, in checkmate but God when it looked like you would be dead sleeping in your grave but God you know God always shows up just in the nick of time because it's always in his plan it's not in our plans, it's in his plans. And we live in a world today, if it weren't for God, we would all be bound for hell. But I like the word, but God. This little verse here says, Oh Lord, I stopped by the morning to shout with somebody else when I said, but God. When I wasn't fit to live, and I wasn't good enough to die, but God. Who was rich in mercy, who was rich in grace, but God. Look beyond my faults and saw my needs, but God. Can you say this morning that a lot of the things that you do, a lot of the things that you wonder about, that you can look back and say, I was dead in my sins. I was dead in my trespasses, but God. You know, Pharaoh said to Joseph, 
I had a dream, but no one can interpret it. But I heard that it was said to you that uh, you can hear a dream and you can interpret it. Uh, and Joseph said, I can't do that. I cannot do it. But he said, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. And again, in Genesis uh, 41, 15 and 16, uh, Joseph made the comment to his brother. He said, you meant it harm to me, but God intended it for good, but God. And then in Genesis 50, 20, it says, like water spilled on the ground, which cannot be recovered, so we must die. But God does not take away life. Instead, he devises ways so that a banished person may not remain and strangled with, uh, from him, but God. Second Samuel 14, 14, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. In Psalms, David wrote in Psalms, he said to them, you are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of men, but God knows your hearts. And you know God knows our hearts today too. You might think you're fooling God, but God knows our hearts. Luke said, uh, you killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. And Luke says, we were witnesses to this. And then in Acts, he said to them, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with the Gentiles or to visit him. Listen, but God. But God has shown me that I should not call any man impure or unclean. And again in Acts, brothers, think of what you were when you were called not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. He's still doing that today. We still live in that world today. God chose the weak things, and he's still choosing the weak things to put this world to shame. In 1 Corinthians 1 26, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. And I could go on and on and on with the but gods of the Bible. But let me tell you about God, the but God that we're talking about here. But without God, we're lost. But God is the only God in the world. There shall be no other gods before me, he said. And we believe that this morning. My question to you this morning, do you have Christ in your heart? Do you have Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in your heart this morning? Hebrews 12.10 says, But God... Those have to be the most two exciting and encouraged hopeful words in all of God's word. So it is no wonder Paul chose to use them at this time. He just finished his writing about a total hopeless man apart from God. But with these two simple words, but God, he restored their hope. Things look better. Things look good. We were dead in our trespasses. We were dead in our sins. But God, some people say, but God showed up. No, but, but God's always there. God's always there to pick us up, to lift us up. And he loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for all our sins, for all eternity. And yet people, it's simple. It's that simple, people. And then people want to say, that's just your opinion, preacher. No, that's not my opinion. That's what the book of Jesus Christ, the Holy Bible, it was all about him. It was all about God sending his son into the world because he loved you. You can't even imagine the love that God has for you. It don't matter what condition you're in this morning. God loves you. And there's nothing you can do this morning unless you think of that, those two words, but God, 
but God can help me out of this condition. God can put me in a better condition. And I pray that God will come into your heart this morning and that you'll pray to God and say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I know that I'm in the world today and I want to come out of this world and I want Jesus to come into my heart. I want to take the world out of my heart and put Jesus in my heart. I know I'm a sinner. Please, Jesus, come into my heart this morning. And Jesus will hear that. He's waiting for it. He's waiting for you to open that door so that he can come in. And if you don't open, he knocks. But if you don't open, he can't come into your heart this morning. May you have a very blessed week to do, to, uh, this week. Let us pray. And Father, we are so thankful that we have a Savior today. Because without Jesus, we are lost. With Jesus, we are saved. No other way. No other way except through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus told his disciples on the night that they were having the last supper. This is my body which was broken for you. And he tells us that today. This is his body that's broken for us. Take it in remembrance of me. And he took the cup and he said, this is my blood which was shed for you. That's for us today also, Lord, and we just thank you for it. We can't thank you enough for it. Thank you for everything that you do for us. He told us to take this and drink. And it's all in remembrance of him. But God, but God, for God so loved the world, that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And that's what we strive for is that eternal life today. And we thank you for all these things and pray that this has touched someone's hearts this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we do pray these prayers. Amen.